Okay, everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> I believe this would be part 13 of the Blue Nose build. I don't say that too often. Uh, is anybody bored yet? I know I sat out there a couple nights ago and uh, was watching my videos and I about fell asleep on them. So uh, here's where we're at. I started planking the deck. I got one board on. Right down the center. Got one board on right down the center. Okay. Cut it at the step and then got the next one on up to the bow. Uh, remember in the last video I talked about if you've got anything you want to do on the inside, now's the time to do it. Well, I don't know if uh, I'm going to open up the hatch door back here in the back on that cabin. I'm not sure about that, but if I do, I plan to head for it, and I put a little platform in here. Can you see that? Cut a little platform to fit down in there, and if I decide to open up that hatch door on that cabin, I can put a little ladder down there. All right? I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but I'm just planning ahead for it. And then I'll take some more of this tulip, okay? and paint that all black so I just put that in there, I epoxied it in there uh, I put a little board underneath here to catch this edge and then got it set pretty level, I had to file this down and trim it and everything so I got that little platform in there now don't forget to uh, mark the edge of your planks however you want to do it like I said before, I'm using a pencil, either, either kind, I'm using a pencil, and I'm going across the edges of all my plank. Now I forgot to do the first one, so I had to come back in with this pencil and get down in there and do that first plank on both sides. But here's the way I do it. I take about four of them, lay them on their edge, and then just take this pencil and go across it like that. You got to kind of hold them together and just go across them all. Okay? Got these little spring clamps holding them together. And then when I get to one side done, I flip it over and do the other side. But however you want to do it, you know, I was reading on a forum last night. Seems to be a lot of guys use the pencil method. Okay, you, you, you've got so many options. You've got chalk, uh, the Sharpie, the little Sharpie pens. Like I said, you've got to be careful with them. Because if uh, you're using super glue or anything like that, it will, uh, it will stain on you. Uh, just take a couple of them. Take a couple of your little small pieces of scrap and put them together. You know, do whatever you want to do on the edge, glue them together and see how it turns out. So don't forget to do the edges of your planks. Alright, I'm going to do the uh, rear section first. That seems like it might be the easiest. And then I'm going to go into the, uh, the foredeck. So, we'll see how it goes. I might throw some pictures in here and there. Because I know you guys don't want to sit here and watch me do this whole deck. But I might throw a couple pictures in here and there. But uh, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm getting started on this. So there will probably be more to this part. What are we at? 13? Alright. Okay. Um, I filmed about a two or three minute video there. And I didn't even have the camera turned on. All right, so let's do it again. Um, I guess it would help if I showed you how I got my first plank on there and how I decided where it should go. But before I say that, I, I want to tell you, there is one other option. Instead of doing the pencil marks or the chalk or whatever you want to use, I've seen guys use a piece of string in between each plank to give the illusion of caulking. Uh, the only problem I see with that on this particular ship is... Uh, you got these openings in that string, you're going to, you know, 
I would not use super glue on that string because super glue on a string turns it to like a piece of wire. So you would almost have to use Elmer's glue on it and before it could set up, you know, that string could sag and stuff. It, it's whatever you want to do. But anyway, here's how I found my first plank. I just didn't eyeball down the center of this keel here and lay that first plank on there. I took a measurement from this plank to this plank, split it in half, put a little mark there, and then when I laid this plank down, I split that little mark down the center of this plank. And then I did the same thing on the rear. Took a measurement from here to here, found the center, and then laid that plank on there, split that little mark down the center of that plank. Because this is not 100% accurate, okay? Do it this way, you will find the center. Now, when you lay this first one down, because the ship is kind of kind of bowed like that in the center, you have to you have to push this down, clamp it down. And then when you do that, the plank has a tendency to drift to one side or the other. So I took a uh, I took a ruler here, all right. And when I got that first one down, I made sure that that plank was nice and straight. Okay? And got my as I was putting clamps on, I was checking it, constantly checking it, make sure I didn't lose that that nice straight line and then clamped it on like that. All right? And once again, using my tight bond And one other thing, very, very important, don't forget to mark on that top plank where your mast hole is. Uh, I'd hate to see somebody get this all done and then forget to mark that and go, oh man, where's my hole? So I got two little pencil marks there where that mast is going to be. So uh, once I get a few more in here, I can come back in and open that up. Do not forget that. Okay, so I'm going to get started with this. Okay, <clears throat> I'm back. Uh, you can see I'm making some progress on the on the deck here. Uh, main uh, purpose of this section of this video is I am doing my nibbing, okay? And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Uh, you can see I got my hole cut out for the mast. I got a real rough cut there. That's not the, the actual size, but it's just a rough cut so I know where that mast goes. And I don't know if it's showing up or not, and, and I'll, bring the, I'll be bringing the ship up closer to the camera in a minute. But those uh, pencil marks that I put on the sides of my planks, okay, you see how they're showing up? Alright, I really like that compared to that Sharpie that I used on the Bounty. So there, it seems to be working out pretty good so far. Uh, I want to talk about something here in a minute. This little piece back here that I keep referring to all the time, that goes on back here. Uh, I noticed from looking at the plans that there is, a, I believe it's like a little block and tackle goes on back here. Actually it looks like it mounts to the bottom plank on the transom from the way the plans look. That's what that hole there is for. It comes up through that hole. So it's a good thing I haven't put this on yet because I wouldn't want to be having to work underneath of that. Not a whole lot of room there. So I'll be putting that on before this even goes on. Alright. Just a little word of caution about that. You got a piece, or, and I also think there's something else goes in back here. So I'll be checking the plans out on that before I put mount that. Okay, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about these little clamps. I really like these things. These things work great. The only problem is you you know you start running out of room. Okay, I only got a few more planks I can do, and then they're no good no more. I did buy some smaller ones which I can get a couple more planks out of with these smaller ones and I use a little piece of wood inside. I've got a little piece of wood I cut 
I'll lay that down there and put that clamp on it and that will help hold that board down. Alright, so if you can see the difference in the sizes, just got them at the office supply store. Alright, one thing about these clamps, they leave a little dimple in the wood when you take them off, at least they do for me. Uh, as I pop these off of here, you'll see a little mark where they were sitting on the board. Don't panic, don't worry about it. Uh, I noticed most of them go away overnight, I guess from humidity getting back into that wood and, and bringing it back to its original shape. If they don't go away, take a little bit of water I got sitting here. I got a little thing of water, put it on the end of your finger and wipe it on there and let it air dry. It's an old furniture trick and uh, let it air dry and, and they'll, that wood will spring back to its original shape. If there is still a little bit of mark there, don't worry about it, you're going to be sanding. I had them all over at one time, but they, they disappeared on their own. Uh, these planks are not all perfectly, exactly the same. Some of them are a little thicker, some of them are a little wider, and we're only talking the hair of an ant's ass. But there is a difference in them. So, you don't actually wind up with a perfectly smooth deck just by laying your boards on there. You will have to do some sanding. Alright, so I'm going to bring this up to the camera. I'm going to focus in as much as I can and I'm going to show you how I've been doing my nibbing. So let me get focused in here. Okay, that's about as close as I can get with that camera. Uh, I will be bringing it up because I notice if I bring it up closer you can see it better. But I'm doing that nibbing, okay? And that is, for anybody that doesn't know, this right here, where you work your plank in to the outer band, the waterway or the last plank along the edge of the ship, whatever you want to call it. They're calling it a nibbing strike, okay? This is what I'm doing. Now, these plan this is this right here just gives you the basic idea of what you're dealing with and, and how it goes because if you look at this they got an angle here and an angle here forget all that forget that little angle whatever it's supposed to be and uh, just get the general idea of what what you're doing okay and actually I almost did not do this because this plank, and I'm going to talk millimeters here, this plank is only about two millimeters wide and when you shave down to the end of it you only got about a millimeter wide board right there. That's not a whole lot wider than what that little V is, you know? So I, I, I began thinking about it and I thought, is it going to be worth all this work to go through doing this or should I just take and cut, you know, just trim them boards to fit into this pie wedge and just shove them in there? Because I'm sitting here about a foot and a half away from it and I can just barely see it. Hopefully it'll show up a lot better once it's all stained. But I know it's there. It's a little bit of craftsmanship and it does look nice. Let me bring it up here to you and show you. Okay, uh, before I bring this up to the camera and show you what this nibbing looks like, uh, I wanted to mention this. You remember, if you've been watching my videos, when I laid these uh, first planks down, the waterways they call them, okay, if you remember, this first one here on the rear of the ship, and I believe it's up on the, I think it's the whole length of the ship. This plank here was actually supposed to be one of these deck planks. Like I said, it's about two millimeters wide. Well, this plank here is actually one of the planks from the hall. It's a little bit wider. And I'm talking maybe, uh, I don't know, a 32nd to a 16th of an inch wider. 
And remember I told you I was playing in the head in case I did this? Well, it's a good thing I did because if I had one of these little thin planks up here, I wouldn't have a whole lot of room left when I started cutting into this. So I'm glad I did go ahead and use that wider plank because it gives me more, more room up in this area. Otherwise I'd have been calling it close. And I think it looks better with that wider plank. Uh, I don't know why that, they don't tell you that in the plans. I think that's the way it should be. But, uh, okay, I'm going to bring this on up to you and show you what this nibbing looks like. Okay, now I got this in my hand. And I got to be just at the right distance. Otherwise it fades in and out. But you can see it right here. This is the nibbing. Three planks I got on there. Trying to keep it focused. And it might not look like they're in there good and tight, but those are pencil marks. Those will come out when I do my final sanding. Alright? And that's a pencil mark line up there. Okay? There's what she looks like. Now this very first board I had to special make that one because the last plank didn't come up square with the end of the ship right here. So this one I had to special make and then I started my nibbing from there on out. I got three of them up there right now. There you go. Alright, so once again I sat here for almost two hours looking at this, experiment with stuff, trying to figure this out. And then it kind of dawned on me, this is almost the same thing. Let me see if it'll show up. As, uh, where am I at with the pencil? There it is. It's almost the same thing as these steelers I did on the side. Now I know this boat looks kind of rough. I haven't done my final sanding or anything yet. So, uh, and you can see pencil lines on this too. Alright, so basically, on a steeler back here, where am I at? I'm getting camera. Remember how I told you you had to shave down this board, shave down that board, then shave this one to fit in between them? Well, this is basically the same thing. Only you're doing two boards instead of three. You're not touching the plank underneath of it. You're shaving down getting your shape of this plank here and then shaving this one up here to match it okay so it's basically just like a steeler okay so here's how I done it I took a plank let me get one here okay so here's what I done I took a plank got a little bit longer than what I need the step is back here a little bit further okay and I took, and we're talking, like I said, about a two millimeter wide plank here. And you're going to split that in half. I just eyeball it. I look at it, find what I think is the middle of that plank, and I put a mark there. Alright? Then I find where this V comes together. You see this V? See how there's a V there? Okay, here it is up on top. I find where that V starts, and I'll put a little pencil mark right there where that V starts. Then I will lay this board on there against the last plank and bring it up to that pencil mark, okay? And then find where that V starts again, right back here. All right? And I will put a pencil mark there. Now you got two pencil marks. Let me see if I can do it this way. You got two pencil marks. You got one in the edge of the board that's in the center of it. And then you got the one back here where the V starts again. Alright. So then I will take my file. And I will file a bevel on that from 
the center mark to that mark and I will file it. Now I found it much easier let me back out a little bit. It's really tough trying to show you this. Okay, I will take, and I found it easier to file sideways instead of this way. And I'll do about halfway between it. I will really bring this end down. Bring it almost down to that mark. And then I'll bevel it all the way from that pencil mark there to there. So what you wind up with is something like that okay you got half of the plank right there on the end hold it maybe it'll show up better on this I don't know if that's showing up that good or not so you got a little bevel there and you got half of the plank left all right then I will take that and bring that back up here. Now that I got my bevel on it, and I will bring it back up to that pencil mark I put where that where that V starts. Bring it up to that pencil mark. Lay it on there. Making sure it's, you know, on, on this plank below it. Looks good to me. And then I will trace the outline of this bevel on that waterway, okay? And that little squared off end. So you wind up with this. Let me bring this up. Okay? So you'll wind up with that pencil mark right there on that waterway. See that pencil mark? Right there? Now you're going to cut this out. Now, Hold on a minute while I get back to the desk and focus out a little bit. Okay. Sorry about the uh, cutting in and out, but this is the only way I can do this and let you see what I'm doing. But, okay, I got that pencil mark on there. I will take my very sharp knife and I will shave that down. I will undercut that pencil mark. Okay because that pencil mark was on the outside of that board and it's a hair away from where it really should be so I will undercut that I will leave that line there and I will take the point and stick the point of it in the end here and make that little squared off edge alright and once I get that done I will bring this back up here and test fit it okay I will test fit it see if it fits in there if it doesn't I'll shave a little bit more off. Maybe open up that little end a little bit better. And once I get it to where it is almost dead on, and if I just need a little bit more, well, I might just file a little bit on this. And then I get it in there, and it is a nice, tight, even fit. And then I'll come to the back and trim that off where that step is. Alright, so then once I get it in there, I just do the same thing for the next one. And it's working out real nice. I, I, I think it looks real good. Whether anybody else will notice it, but us guys, I don't know. But uh, you can see them, them uh, marks, you know, where I did the edge of them boards with a pencil. They look real nice. Once I get this sanded down, I got, you know, it's pretty rough right now. And once I get this all sanded down and, and get a stain on it, I think they're going to come out real nice. Alright, I think that's enough for this.